can master challenges as a child of God. We have been discussing things that you should not do, things that you should do. There are things you should know, there are things you should do. There are also things you must avoid during challenges. Amen. We established a few of them uh, from the very beginning. We established a number of things. We said, number one, don't be surprised by challenges. Don't allow challenges to surprise you. Whichever field of endeavor you find yourselves in, make sure you are ready and prepared for challenges. Let the challenge be surprised by you. Eh? And not be the one the challenges will surprise. Let the challenge come and meet you so ready because you were aware of it ahead of time and prepared for it. Amen. And so we said, don't be surprised by challenges. Don't allow them to take you unawares. Be ready for them. By that understanding, I pray for the spirit of discernment. Whilst they are in the meeting room in the dark world, planting, planning. In your engine room of prayer, may the Lord reveal it ahead of time to you. Amen. That accident will be revealed to you. Amen. That conspiracy against you will be revealed to you. Amen. That agenda to frustrate your career will be revealed to you. Amen. They will come and meet you ready. You will be stronger than any challenge the enemy throws at you. If you believe it, let your amen roar like tender. Amen. So we said, don't be surprised by challenges. The next one we learned was, don't be afraid. Don't allow fear into you. And we said, once you get the first one right, you will get the second one right. If you are not taken unawares, you will not be afraid. Because if you are prepared for something, you are not scared of it. When you prepare well for exam, you don't get BP the night before the paper. Because you are ready for it. You have read your books, you have researched, and you are prepared that no matter where the questions are going to come from, you are going to be ready. And so, you cannot fear if you are ready for it. Avoid fear. The power of the enemy is in fear. Goliath will only defeat you if he can scare you. But if after roaring against you, he sees you still running towards him and approaching him and still calling him an uncircumcised, uh, what do you call it, Philistine, Every power in him is broken. The devil's power is fear. That is why Jesus said, he came on me and he could not find anything on me. Anything that can connect Satan to you, that his challenges would destroy you. I decree today, before you leave the service, let it be removed from you. I said, let it be eliminated from your life. If you believe it, your amen will roar like tender. And we, we, we declared on Sunday that don't sin in a time of challenge. Don't sin in a time of challenge. Many people use challenges as an excuse to sin, as a justification to sin. It is not a justification to sin. It is an opportunity for you to pass the test for your promotion. Every challenge you overcome, you are promoted. Every challenge that overpowers you, demotes you. So you can, challenges are examinations that you write. And I've always said in this church that anything that has not yet been tested should not be trusted. Anything that has not been tested should not be trusted. The reason why you come and you sit on the chair and you relax is because you have tested the chair and it's reliable. Have you ever been to a place and they gave you a chair and you made your hand to sit first? Your hand had to do the sitting first. You touched it. Then after your hand, it's the edge of one side of your buttock that will sit on it. Because when you look at the chair, no, you suspect the chair. You suspect that it can defeat you. But the reason why you have, anytime you come here, when we say, now take your seats, you don't even look on your seat, you just sit and you relax all your body, is that you have tested that chair over and over and it can be trusted. It has never been broken. That is how you will be from today. Yeah. Every crisis that comes your way will go and leave you still strong and firm enough. Any challenge that comes your way will come and leave you still at that same place and stronger than ever. Amen. You believe it? Let your amen roll like tender. Amen. On Friday, we established through the music of the springs of melody that you must learn to stretch your faith. Learn to stretch your faith in a time of challenges. Learn to stretch your faith. Have you realized there were times Jesus spoke to some people and said, Oh ye of little faith. So it is not the absence of faith that guarantees your, challenge, your, your defeat during a challenge. It is not only the absence of faith in your life that will guarantee your defeat in a time of challenge. 
But if the faith cannot survive the lifespan of the challenge, you will be defeated. So it is not every defeat that is a result of faithlessness. But it is also, it can be a result of a lack of a tenacity in your faith. Some people have faith for today, but they don't have faith for tomorrow. Some people have faith for this week, but they don't have faith for next week. All it takes Satan is to wait long enough and they will run out of gas. But we learned on Friday that as a Christian, you must learn to stretch your faith. Learn to stretch your faith. Don't allow the challenge to outlive your faith. If you were waiting for a year for the challenge to go and the challenge survives the year and it is moving on, you must still have a residue of faith to keep you going and carrying that challenge and never getting defeated. It is very, very, very important and a lot of Christians fall victim of that. That is why you see a young lady waiting to get a husband and after a while being faithful, being committed for years and finally it gets to a point that she goes weary and family members start telling her, you, don't, don't go and give birth and be sitting there. And she so said, the way it's going, may do many possible. And then, uh, before you realize, she's pregnant. Why? She has run out of gas. It's not that she didn't have faith. She had little faith. Jesus looks down from heaven and says, oh, once again, oh ye of little faith. But I pray, no matter how long the challenge lasts in your life, may you last longer. Amen. May your faith last longer. Amen. May your tenacity last longer. Amen. May your faith outlive the lifespan of your challenge. Amen. That is how you master challenges. That is how you master challenges. You master challenge like Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. They started, they said, Our God, O ye king, let it be known to you that our God is able to deliver us from this challenge. However, even if our God does not deliver us, we will still not bow to this image you have created. It tells you they don't only have faith to, for their God to deliver them, but they have faith to stand when it looks like God is not responding. You must learn to stretch your faith. You must learn to stretch your faith. There are some of you, if you look back, your faith has dwindled. It has come down. The reason is that this thing you believe God for has taken too long. And so you are running out of gas. It is one of the, 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 the weapons of challenges. Some challenges defeat you not because they are heavy enough. It's just that their lifespan is long enough. Generational cases, generational challenges generational diseases, they are a form of long challenges. They are part of the dangerous challenges. Your grandfather fought it. He couldn't survive it. He handed over to your father. Now it has been handed over to you and you are battling with it. You are struggling with it. And if you are not careful, you get weary and you give up. Like Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego. They had the faith to stand before the king and say no. And the king thought that was all they had. Afterwards he said carry them. He thought on the way they would say they will, they will look back and give up. No, they went. Those who were carrying them into the fire, the flames licked them. He thought these children would still cry. They still went inside the fire. They entered the fire. When the devil, the more you pray or the more you trust in God, things are moving from bad to worse. I pray, may your faith move from good to best. I said, when the challenges in your life move from bad to worse, receive the capacity for your faith to move from good to best. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? I said, what, whatever challenge it is you are going through, when it moves from bad to worse, may your faith move from good to best. Amen. Anytime you receive the medical report and they say it is looking bad, May you look within your spirit and your spirit will tell you you are looking better than you were yesterday. May you never be overwhelmed by a challenge. May no challenge outlive your faith. The grace to pursue this thing until you see its end. Let it be released upon you. I said let it be released upon you. 
we established from Genesis chapter 15 from verse 1 to 6. The Bible says that God came to Abraham and said, I am your exceeding great reward. Abraham said, what are you talking about? I am on retirement. In fact, I have gone past retirement. And I have no time. You are talking about reward. I have already selected somebody to be my heir. The Bible says by the verse 5, God said, it is not that person who is going to be the heir to your throne. It is not that person. He says, I am going to bring somebody from within your own loins. Verse 6 is one of my favorite scriptures of all time. The Bible says, after all these delays, after all these frustrations, the Bible says in verse 6 that, and Abraham believed. Even when God came late, Abraham still had faith to believe. I pray that when God comes late, you will still be found faithful. When God comes late for your marriage, you will still be found faithful. When God comes late for your career, you will still be found faithful. When God comes late for your business, you will still be found faithful. When God comes late to heal you and to deliver you, you will still be found faithful. May you still have faith no matter the time and the hour of day that God decides to open your fire. May you be ready and waiting for your miracle. If you believed it, your amen would be louder than I am hearing it. I said your amen would be louder than I am hearing it. And so you must learn to stretch your faith. Some challenges stretch your faith. At the time the promise was made to Abraham, it didn't make medical sense, but it made scriptural sense. That it looks medically impossible does not mean it is scripturally impossible. It depends on the lenses with which you look at your challenge. Don't define your challenge in the way God differently from the way God defines it. When you look at your challenge as a man, admit as a man that I am weighing down. But when you look at it with the lenses of God, accept it that God is bigger than any challenge in your life. <laughs> accept it. Accept it. Accept it. As a man, this medical report doesn't look good. Because that is what man can do. But don't use that as God's vocabulary. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Paul said, in all these things, we are more, not just Congress, we are more than Congress. I declare, in this your weakest moment, at the time that Abraham could kiss his wife, do every style he wants to do, every position that the doctors would recommend for a baby, there was no promise. At a time that he could barely walk, God said it's time to produce nations. In your weakest moments, you will produce your greatest blessings. I said in your weakest moments, you will produce your greatest testimonies. I said you, in that weak moment, in that area, where when you look at it, you see it as a weakness. You don't want the devil to even know it. I'm saying out of that same place, can anything good come out of Nazareth? The savior of the whole world, the king of all kings, the lord of all laws, the prince of peace, the mighty ruler, counselor, mighty God, everlasting father. God brought him from an unlikely place. God will bring your greatest testimony from your unlikely situation. If you believe it, let your amen roll like tender. I said, let your amen roll like tender. Lift up both of your hands and say, for as long as it takes, I shall wait. I shall be ready and waiting for my moment. Don't let a challenge outlive your faith. When a challenge outlives your faith, every faith you exhibited in time past has been wasted. Anytime you feel like throwing in the towel, remember turning point how you have been crying. Anytime you feel like throwing in the towel, remember the morning devotions, how you have been crying. Remember the seeds you have sown to connect. Anytime you feel like throwing in the towel, remember the moments where you are tired from the day's work, yet you had to drive to church. Anytime you feel like throwing in the towel, remember the fastings and the prayers. You are too in to get out. You have put too much in this to give up. Story is told of a sportsman 
that went to run the race. He represented his country. And when they ran the race, at a point he got injured. Is this long, what do they call it? Oh, there's a name they call it. Marathon. Those ones that they keep running, you lose count. They ran at this guy. I don't know whether it's muscle pool, whatever it is. Finally, he got injured. And everybody was ahead of him. Those who were even, the second but last, had come around and caught him again. But this guy was still running. At a point, he couldn't run. He was limping. At a point, he couldn't limp. He was walking. He was still struggling. And the camera was on him. And he kept on dragging himself. And the camera was on him. On him. And he finished. He finished last, but he finished. I'm told the, the, the journalist interviewed him and asked him, why? You, you had no chance of winning. Why did you still waste your time, still struggling to come and cross and end the race when you will not get a reward? You are even going to make history, Guinness Book of, Guinness, uh, Book of Records, eh, as the slowest finisher of this race. I'm told the young man looked at the journalist and said, my country brought me here to start and finish the race. My country, they brought me here to start and to finish the race. They didn't bring me here to give up halfway. I want to go back and be celebrated as a man. Maybe I didn't win the battle, but I finished the race. 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 Finish the race. May you finish your race. May you finish your race. May you finish your race. You may not finish it on top speed, but you will finish it anyway. You may not finish it as the first who arrived, but you will finish it anyway. You may not finish it breaking the world record, but you will finish anyway. But guess what? The kingdom that God we belong to, the Olympics God has brought us on this earth to run. Hear me. All you need to do is to finish. Even if you are last, you receive the same crown as the first. <laughs> Everybody receives a gold medal. In your kingdom, in the race that you are running, everybody receives a gold medal. All you need to do to qualify for a medal is to finish. If you finish first, congratulations, receive your gold medal. If you finish last, congratulations, you finish your gold medal. That is why Jesus said in the 11th hour, he brought also workers. Others started earlier. When they finished, he gave them the same reward and they didn't understand. The king makes the rule. The king makes the rules. And your king says, if you finish that race, you will get a gold medal. Receive the grace to finish. I said, receive the grace to finish. I said, receive the grace to finish. Don't throw in the towel. Don't throw in the towel. Stretch your faith. Stretch your faith. Many Christians, when I was listening to the song, the spirit ministered to me and said, many of my believers have faith, but they don't have stretched faith. The elasticity of their faith cannot stretch that long. And the devil knows it. So what the devil does is that he moves the battle from the Usain Bolt level and he moves it to the Hale Selassie level. With the Usain Bolt battle, if you can run fast enough, in less than 10 seconds, you are free. The devil knows that Christians are able to believe in God when the word of God is fresh, when the encounter is fresh. But the longer you stretch them, the longer, the weaker they become. If you can take them that long. He knows that many Christians, once they get fuel that can take them to town, they begin behaving carelessly. And they think that all the battle they need to fight is between Abyssin and town. So the devil only slows down and they look like they are ahead. When they get to town and they are still strong, the devil moves the fear prey. By the time they get to unite, full well finish. They are defeated. Not because they didn't have faith, but their faith couldn't stretch. I ask you, Abraham, if God comes at this moment that you thought you can never go to school, will he still find faith ready for that scholarship? If God comes to you at a time that you feel like you cannot get married again, will he still find faith, believing God for the best husband? If God comes to your situation right now at a time that all the medical reports in the past 10 years says there is no hope, will he still find faith for healing? Will he still find a woman with the issue of blood who has been bleeding for the past 12 years, yet when he heard, he didn't come to church. Jesus was passing and she 
heard that Jesus is passing, bleeding for 12 years. You can tell how anemic she had become. Yet this woman rose up and the Bible says she kept saying in her heart, if only I touched the hem of his garment. Can you imagine the level of faith? Until that time, everybody that received the testimony from Jesus received the laying of hands. Everybody that received the testimony from Jesus, he had to speak to them and minister to them. But here comes a woman who has been disappointed and stretched and never had any solution to the problem. The Bible said she has spent all she had on physicians and it never got better. Not only healed, it didn't get better. Not that things changed, just that the sickness didn't go. It never got better. It went worse for 12 years. But when she heard of Jesus, even to touch his garment, she had faith to take by touching the garment. She had faith to take She was tired in the body, but fresh in the spirit. She was weak in the body, but strong in the spirit. She was forsaken in the body, but I've been young and now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their children beg for bread. She was helpless in the body, but the Holy Spirit was her help. I pray for you. When God comes late, may he still find you when God comes late may he still find you in faith I said when God comes late may he still find you in faith my question is if God comes late will he find you in faith will he find you in faith will he find you in faith anytime I read the Bible as a student of the Bible still to go into the Bible school I don't know why God was always teaching me of people who are to be stretched. That is where he told me, Joshua, the longer your testimony stays in my hand, the better it becomes. Hear me. If God is behind your delay, I envy you. When you ask God for a car in 2020 and he delays at 2030, he gives you 2030 more. <laughs> If God is behind your delay, I envy you. Oh, God behind your delay. When God was behind, I told you at the end of it, when, when you have stretched faith, when God stretches your faith, he doesn't give you the same thing that those with little faith get. All the people God stretched their faith in scripture, they became kingdom celebrities. We talk about them in the night, talk about them in the day, talk about them on Sunday, talk about them every day. Abraham had to be stretched to the limits. His wife had given up to the point that the mere thought of getting a pregnant again was funny. She laughed. Have you ever been through a problem to the point that you've cried so much that now when you think about it, you laugh? And people think you're happy. You are not happy. You are getting mad. That... Yeah. But at that level, God brought nations. God never delays you to give you what everybody got. Never. I've never seen it. If God delays you, he gives you something that will make you forget the delay forever. Forever! There is no way Abraham can remember the insult of his friends that said you are childless. Never! What are you talking about? Can you mention any of the people, their children's names? Who is Eliezer's son's name? They are nameless. Those who are flexing with you with their two by four blessings that they got today, they are nameless blessings. You are an elephant. When you get pregnant with a goat, you don't give birth on the same day. There's a story of a, <laughs> there, is a, <laughs> there is a story of a pregnant elephant and a pregnant goat. They got pregnant on the same day. Six months later, the, the goat gave birth. And she changed her style of walking. When she passed before the elephant, she said, elephant, hey, hey. you don't have a baby, hey, hey. And the elephant was quiet in his head. The elephant was saying, small boys are young. It continued. Six months later, the baby of the goat, both mother and child, got pregnant again. Elephant had not still given birth. Then this time she came with the baby and said, elephant, hey, hey. 
He still don't have a child. No. Elephant was quiet. Big people don't talk plenty. <laughs> if you have things in charge, you don't, you don't rush. Then after a while, this thing persisted. She came again. Say, elephant, elephant, said, my friend, shut up. Look at me and look at you. Are we carrying the same thing? You are littering around. Nobody felt your birth. The day I give birth, my baby, eh? my baby is able to combine you and all your grandchildren, the whole of your family, your nephews. If they put them together, they cannot match the weight of my baby. I am carrying something heavy, so God has to take time to bring it out. Somebody is carrying something heavy. The world has not seen it yet, but it is soon to come. You are carrying something heavier than you can imagine. God is not wasting time. He is investing time because he's about to deposit something heavy, something weighty. What it takes others 10 years to get, God is about to bring it to you in one day. He said, my friend, I'm carrying load. We are talking about weight and we are talking about handkerchiefs. <laughs> Hannah had stretched faith. Stretched faith. She was the most loved of her husband. The man loved her to the point that anytime she cried, the man said, am I not enough for you? She had a husband who was ready to be a baby to her. Oh, I tempted to preach marriage. The role of the husband in difficult times. Modern day husbands would have said, go and make your confessions. How many abortions did you have before I met you? Because the day I met you, the mini skirt you were wearing, I was suspicious. Not, not Hannes' husband. Is it Elkanah? Elkanah. Elkanah said, Anna, am I not enough for you? I am not only your husband. I will be whatever you want me to be to you. Man, what a romantic husband. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. He said, I'll be whatever you want me to be. If you want me to cry, man, man, like a baby, I'll cry for you. If you want me to lie on your laps, I will lie for you. I will make you forget about anything. I am one man thousand. But the Bible said they kept on making mockery of Hannah. Making mockery. They said her rivals, they made mockery of her. Because they had children. Can any of you mention the name of Anna's rival's children? Maybe you have a prophetic gift that can go back into the ages. We are waiting for you. Can any of you mention one name of Hannah's rival's children? Hannah was crying when she should have been rejoicing. Thank you, Holy Ghost. If God opened some of you your eyes to see what is on the way coming, you would have done fasting and prayer not to ask for miracles, but to ask for forgiveness that instead of praising him and trusting him, are forsaking him and getting frustrated because you cannot see does not mean it does not exist it doesn't mean it does not exist finally Hannah went to the Lord and the prophet said may the Lord remember you a year by this time he said and the Lord remembered Hannah God does not forget. It means on that day, God picked the folder. When you go to the hospital and you are in the queue, and Dr. Helen is in the consulting room, and you are in the queue, and other people are entering, and then you, they don't call you, does that mean you have been forgotten? It's folder by folder. <laughs> it's folder by folder. May the Lord pick somebody's folder after today's service. May angels be released from above to locate somebody's folder today after the service. The Bible says when Hannah, God remembered Hannah. Today, how many years after? How many children are called Samuel? Can you mention any of uh, the, the arrivals' children? But you know what? God's intention is that he would have had many Hannahs and many Abrahams and many Sarahs. But you know what? A lot of harness, maybe people who would have gotten better and bigger breakthroughs than harness, 
they couldn't stretch their faith. Their faith drowned in the wilderness. They ran out of gas, so they couldn't reach their place of destiny, their place of coronation, their place of encounter. So it looks as if they didn't get it. They didn't know. They didn't walk far enough. They didn't walk long enough. They didn't stretch their faith enough. And that is why we don't have a lot of harness. Because the Hannah kind of blessing is for those who have stretched faith. Challenges sometimes can stretch you to test the elasticity of your faith. Up till date, when they were talking about children who are nameless, not knowing God was wrapping and preparing in Hannah's womb, the prophet who will anoint the first king of Israel. <laughs> The prophet who will anoint the king out of whose lineage the savior, the son of God will emerge. Samuel, a delayed blessing, is the one that anointed King David as king from the house of Jesse. Go and read the book of John. Go and read the book of Matthew. Look, when they start talking about the genealogy of Jesus, the heads that Samuel anointed, they were mentioned. Hannah, you were crying because of nameless blessings. God is about to do something after your years of crying. God is going, about to do something after your years of name callings and insults and judgments. God is about to do something after your years of mockery. Until you are mocked to death, you are not close enough to your miracle yet. <laughs> I feel like staying here longer. Can I stay here longer? Almost every great story in scripture is a product of delayed and stretched faith. Do you like the name Samson? Does it ring a bell? Samson's parents were childless for many years. They were servants of God, but childless. And the whole nation, I'm in the book of Judges now, the whole nation was at the mercy of these Philistines and these enemies of God. And they were destroying God's people. And they were crying to God for answers. When are you going to deliver us? And while the nation was crying, I believe Samson's parents were also there. If you don't give us a child, we are going to leave you. We have been serving you for years and we have nothing to show. Other people have children. And God was trying to whisper to them, that the nations cry in your belly and in your loins. I have wrapped the answer to a nation's cry. But they couldn't see. May the Lord enlighten the eyes of your understanding. They were frustrated. They didn't know they were the answer to the question. They were also crying. The Bible says something was born purposely to destroy the Philistines. Theologically, Samson was not, his disobedience was divine disobedience. His disobedience of his parents was divine disobedience. Because God had to find a way of sending Samson into the land of the Philistines and to use his power to destroy them. Finally, Samson, a delayed blessing came. Other children were in school writing exam. After that, the Philistines would say, hey, and they all ran away. God brought out a lanky man, anointed him with the Holy Spirit. At that time, the Holy Spirit was not permanently on this earth. Yet, the delayed parents, God had wrapped a dimension of the Holy Spirit into this young man. Anytime there was danger, the Bible says, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon Samson. He had the capacity to use the jawbone of an ass to kill thousands of military men, not a sword. He had the capacity to pray to God in the wilderness and God will dig a well and water will gush out and he will drink. It was wired in a delayed blessing. Delayed blessing. Delayed blessing. Ah, how about John the Baptist? John the Baptist. Jesus says of him that of all men born by women, there is none great as John the Baptist. 
He said, there is not, Jesus is talking. It's not people who are talking. Jesus gives a testimony of John the Baptist. And he says, John the Baptist, you, of all men. Some of you have missed it. Let me help you know the kind of men that lived in the days of John the Baptist and even before him. Prophet Elijah lived. Prophet Elijah lived. Did you hear about them? Did you hear about them? Joshua, myself, I lived. I could command the sun not to move and it will not move. Even in time, 8 p.m., yet there is light. Why? Joshua had the anointing to say, light in the night. My God. Father, visit me with the Joshua anointing again. Like everywhere witches meet, I will say, light forever. <laughs> Joshua lived. Guess what? Abraham lived. Isaac lived. Jacob lived. Deborah lived. Stars. Woman that could get stars fight for her. Lived. Moses lived. Look at the list of the nominees for greatest man of the year. That will be given in November. The nominees are Moses. Joshua. Elijah. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Samson, Prophet Isaiah, Prophet Jeremiah, Micaiah, Micah. Look at the list of them all. Jesus said, of them all, this is the greatest. The greatest to be born. Guess what? His parents his father was a priest called Zachariah. And his mother, Elizabeth. Guess what? They were family relations to Jesus' mother. Family relations to Jesus' mother. He served as a priest every day. Yet he had no child. Years of waiting. But this guy was still faithful to God. He still trusted in God. Finally. Hey, the greatest are the products of delays. <laughs> the greatest are products of delays and frustrations. You have been frustrated in your marriage. You are about to produce the greatest marriage. You have been delayed before getting married. You are about to produce the envy of many. You have been delayed before getting a child. You are about to produce the greatest of children. Delays are not denials. The Bible says, the angel appeared to Mary and said, you are favored. God has located you among virgins and said, you, you will carry the Savior. To be able to make Mary believe, the angel led Mary to Elizabeth. He said, as I'm talking to you, somebody prepare your spirit to receive this. Because I'm going to speak it from the deepest part of my heart. And I'm believing God to do something through it. When he carried Mary to Elizabeth, he said, Mary, I want you to know that God can do things without your mind and your consent. God can do something in you without you knowing. He said, Mary, if you are struggling to believe, yours is better. Elizabeth, your cousin, is six months pregnant. <laughs> he said, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, who has been crying? Is it possible that you have been crying even though the miracle has arrived? I want to believe that that Sunday that just passed, Elizabeth went to church and said, God, when? Dabe, dabe, dabe. Oh, I'm looking for a proper Asante song. Dabe, dabe, dabe. If you ever sing that song in this church, I don't know why you don't want to call. I believe that was the song that she sang. But you see, when you are a man of a faith, you sing, I'm reaping the harvest God promised me. 
take back what the devil stole from me and I rejoice today for I shall recover it all I shall recover but I'm rejoicing today yeah he said Elizabeth is pregnant Bible said Elizabeth said what and the Bible said immediately fetus John felt the presence of the Savior still forming in the womb of the mother Mary John began to kick in the womb I come to provoke your pregnancy to kick because I come as a servant of God I come to provoke that job to kick I come to provoke that employment that promotion that healing that deliverance it was in you but the devil blinded your eyes and you never saw it I speak as a servant of God and I decree let it kick let the evidence show let the signs and symptoms begin He began to kick when the Savior came close. And Jesus, not man, Jesus cannot be bribed. Jesus looked at John the Baptist. Hey, this John, this John, no the fear. Jesus knelt before him and he laid hands on him. Hey, whoa. Look at the blessing God had wrapped in a delay. To even kiss, John said, I do not qualify. To even lace his shoes. But you see, when you allow God to stretch your faith and he trusts you, even shoes you cannot, the man who shoes you do not qualify to lay, God will do you the honor of laying your hands on him. Don't say, I do not qualify even to lay his shoe. He is coming. He is coming. And because John was in the spirit, the Bible says he lifted his head and he saw Jesus. He said, behold the lamb that taketh away the sins of men. And when Jesus came, he joined the queue. Kings will come to your rising. I said, kings will indeed come to your rising. If you can hold on long enough, nobles, you will not stand before mere men. You will stand before nobles. Your delayed miracle will become an international testimony. In the name of Jesus, if you can hold long enough, your mess will soon become your message. Your test will soon become your testimony. In the name of Jesus, if you believe in let your amen or all like tender. He said, I do not qualify to lace your shoes. But Jesus said, suffer it to be so. Your faith has qualified you. Your faith. Your faith has qualified you. Your faith. Your faith. You do not qualify. <laughs> your faith. Hey, you do you know what your fathers went through? Your mother went through? You qualify. Look, there are some of you, you have children, products of delay. You don't know what you have given birth to. <laughs> Take care of them. Every product of delay is always wired with unusual grace. But some parents don't raise them well enough. They make a shipwreck of their destiny. John could say, hey, yes, stretched faith. When men count you out, God will count you in. When you have stretched faith, when men disqualify you, God will qualify you. When men reject you, God will accept you. When men neglect you, God will celebrate you. When men deny you access, God will give you access. There is nothing too hard for God to do for a man of stretched faith. Halalala, 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 Halalala,
May the Lord grant you grace. The more the devil delays you, the stronger your faith shall become. The more the devil frustrates you, the more you will dance during praise and worship. The more the devil frustrates you, the more you will be committed in prayer. The more the devil frustrates you, the more you will be committed in service. Do you know the best way to provoke Satan? What he's trying to stop you from doing by the challenge. Do that thing the more. A yen yatu. Me no secret. A yen yatu. Anything that he's trying to stop you from doing because of a challenge, do it more. Yeah, no more. Look at them and say, yeah, no more. Tell another person, yeah, no more. Yeah. He, want, he wants to stop you and look at you. What has God done for you? <laughs> you just laugh. The eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has it come to the, 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 the thought of any man what the Lord has in store for his children. But you know, I love the next verse. He said, but it has been revealed to us by his spirit. I pray, what is hidden to men may it be revealed to you. <laughs> what is hidden before other men may it be revealed to you. Learn to stretch out your faith. When the devil is stretching your faith and it looks like you are, you are running out of gas, don't feel forsaken. That is when God is closer than ever. Hear me, check it. Read Bible carefully. It is in forsaken states people saw the manifest presence of God. Check it. When Shadrach and Meshach went into the fire, that was when Jesus appeared. Have you realized that? When Joshua got to the wall of Jericho and there was no hope, that was where the angel of the Lord appeared. It is when you are at your weakest moments and still faithful that your greatest encounters in the kingdom are provoked. Somebody will have a dream that will turn his life around after this sermon. Somebody will have an encounter that will turn his life around after this message. In the name of Jesus, I speak as a servant of God over you. The grace to keep holding on. The grace to keep trusting. The grace to keep hoping. The grace to keep praying. The grace to keep praising. The grace to keep obeying God's word. If you cannot fly, run. If you cannot run, walk. If you cannot walk, Roll. But whatever it takes to keep holding on to God, do it. Like the man at the pool of Bethesda, if it would take 38 years of waiting, keep waiting until your problem is wasted. May the Lord grant you the grace. Receive fresh grace to laugh at the challenges in your life. Receive fresh grace. To trample over every distraction from the camp of the enemy. Receive fresh grace. Receive fresh grace. Receive fresh grace. Receive fresh grace. To keep moving forward. To keep pushing. To keep crying to the Lord. Receive fresh grace. No matter what comes against you. Receive more grace to stand. Receive 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 grace to stand. In your marriage, keep standing. In your finances, keep standing. In your career, keep standing. In your destiny, keep standing. Whatever the challenge you are going through, receive the grace. Ah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Receive the grace to keep standing. Receive the grace to keep standing. Receive the grace to keep standing. May your faith not run short when the enemy is still moving. May you not run out of gas. 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 I said, may you not run out of gas. May you not run out of gas. On the seventh day, the children of Israel went round more times than any other day. They were weak, but they still did not lose their shout. May you not lose your shout. May you not lose your shout. I'm speaking to someone. Lift up your hands and receive grace. Don't give up. Never to give up. When the devil gives you ten reasons to give up, may the Lord give you a thousand ones to keep standing. When the devil gives you ten reminders to look back, may the Lord give you a million reminders to look forward. In the name of Jesus.
I tell you, as a servant of God, if it were over with you, I would tell you it's over with you. But guess what? It can never be over until God says so. The doctor says so, but I'm waiting for God to say so. The lecturer said so, but I'm waiting for God to say so. Your company has said so, but I am waiting for God to speak. The bankers have said so, but I am still waiting on God. The teachers have said so, but I'm still waiting on God. The finance minister has said so, but I'm still waiting on God. Until God shows up, it is not off. It is only over when the Lord says it is over. The Lord bless you.